Hello. This is Committee on Rules. Uh, we have established a quorum with Councilman Good, Councilman Squilla, Councilman Heenan, and Councilwoman Tasco, and myself, Bill Greenlee. Uh, first, let me, for the record, let me uh, say that Bill number 150145 <coughs> is being held to the call of the chair at the request of the sponsor. And Ms. Marconi, will you please uh, read the title of the first bill? Bill number 150124, an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within area bounded by Kensington Avenue, Letterly Street, Jasper Street, and Haggard Street. Good morning, Mr. Gorski. Please identify yourself and proceed. Good morning, Councilman Greenlee, members of the Rules Committee. I'm Marty Gorski, Division Director of the Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill Number 150124, which was introduced in the City Council on February 19th, 2015, by Council Member O on behalf of Council Member Squilla. Bill Number 150124 amends the Philadelphia zoning maps by rezoning an area bounded by Kensington Avenue, Letterly Street, Jasper Street, and Haggard Street. Bill Number 150124 rezones several parcels from General Industrial I-2 to Industrial Residential Mixed Use (IRMX) which will allow the conversion of a vacant mill into market rate apartments with accessory on-site parking. This is one of several blocks in the neighborhood that the City Planning Commission and East Kensington Neighborhood Association have recommended for rezoning in the East Kensington Transportation and Community Development Plan. This block and adjacent blocks are not located in one of the city's industrial protection areas. The zoning of the remaining parcels on this block match how the land is currently being used and therefore do not need any corrective zoning actions. Philadelphia City Planning Commission at its meeting of March 17, 2015, recommended approval of Bill Number 150-124. And I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Gorski? Seeing none, thank you. Is anyone else here to testify on this bill? Seeing none, thank you. Um, we'll now move on to Ms. Marconi, our next bill, please. Bill number 150168, an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by revising certain provisions relating to IRMX Industrial Residential Mixed Use District. Good morning, Councilman Greenlee, members of the Rules Committee, I'm Marty Grigorski, Division Director of Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill number 150168, which was introduced in the City Council on March 5, 2015, by Council Members Squilla and Johnson. Bill number 150168 amends Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by revising certain provisions relating to IRMX, Industrial Residential Mixed Use District. The changes would modify use, dimensional, parking, and loading requirements to create a more effective mixed use district that maintains existing desirable business and guides future development. The bill requires a portion of the site to be used non residentially, matches the dimensional, parking, and loading requirements to other existing mixed use districts and incentivizes industrial uses through bonuses. Bill number 15168 amends IRMX by aligning the goals of community groups, developers, city council, and the commission by creating a well-rounded mixed-use district that fits a niche for residential and industrial and commercial uses. By requiring industrial and or commercial uses, the district can help with the reuse of former industrial sites with new and innovative uses that will benefit surrounding communities with job creation, services, and the removal of blighted properties. Industrial uses will receive bonuses of either extra height or more lot coverage to incentivize uses that are the goal of Philadelphia 2035 plan and create living wage work for citizens of Philadelphia. Philadelphia City Planning Commission considered Bill Number 15168 at its meeting of March 17, 2015, and recommended approval as amended with the proviso that this change to the zoning code be reviewed in one year's time. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. Again, any questions for Mr. Gorski? Councilman Heenan? No, wait a minute. Well, Councilman Tasco. I was just uh, curious as to what area is this uh, 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 area that we're talking about? Where it, is that? This is a change to the zoning classification that will be citywide. However, the IRMX classification was not widely remapped when we changed to the new zoning classifications. So in order to get this district in your district, you'd have to put it there. Uh, there's not too much of a city that's owned IRMX today. I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah speak a little oh, more into the mic. Well, what, what area of the city is, does this bill cover? This bill is going to cover the entire city. It's changing, mm -hmm. uh, it's changing the district in the entire zoning code. However, not much of the city is actually zoned IRMX. Uh, it's a new district that came about with a new code and was not automatically uh, mapped as part of the change to the system. So anywhere you want it to go is where it would be.
Okay. Councilman Heenan. Mr. Gorsuch, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, could you go back to the original IRMX and could, could you explain what the original intent of IRMX was? The original intent was to take old uh, industrial sites and reuse them for mixed use uh, usage. Basically, we were seeing a number of areas in the city, um, Northern Liberties pops up in my mind, um, that were industrially zoned, um, but transition districts where there's still some viable industrial use, um, but they were converting to residential. So this was an attempt to create a district that would allow both residential and industrial uses on the site as a transition zone. However, the way it was created, there was no requirement that any industrial be in the building at all. So what we were seeing were parcels being redeveloped uh, as basically multifamily uses with the dimensional requirements of an industrial use, which is 100% lot requirement, 60 feet tall. So we were seeing in the few places that this was zoned, um, 60 feet high multifamily uh, townhomes. Do you see this as a, uh, a development incentive whereas before it was a, a redevelopment incentive? <laughs> I think we're seeing it as, as both. Uh, what we're seeing here with the new changes to IRMX is not only are we going to force some uh, non-residential use into the buildings, but we're also giving bonuses. So if you wanted to not only reuse an, an old building or take a new site, you can get a uh, bigger building, basically, if you use a portion of the ground floor or any floor for industrial use. So we think it'd be good for both reuse of existing buildings and for new development. And I do like the mix, of the, the blend of uh, the reuses and uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the new uses, uh, which is defined by the, by the new uh, IRMX. Uh, why eliminate the loading requirements from ICMX? They're not being eliminated, they're being lessened. Uh, right now, the, the way IRMX was created, it mimicked all of the other industrial districts. So it mimicked a medium industrial district where you could do you know, fairly heavy manufacturing, and the loading requirements were different. So the loading requirements were, were heavier for this kind of use that we never really intended for a heavy manufacturing uses. Uh, so what it does is it brings it down to loading standards that are used in other of our, other of our commercial mixed-use districts, CMX3, for example. Uh, so they don't have to put loading spaces or so many loading spaces on every single development where they're not really necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Squill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, do you believe these changes now actually go toward the intent of IRMX when it was first brought into the new code? I do. And do you think that this will now, obviously IRMX, we have some developers out there that would rather do still all residential in, in these uh, old industrial buildings. This also would lead to the, I guess, growth and possibility of light manufacturing and, and, other, and other businesses in this type of facility, along with the possibility of residential use. We hope so. And once, once that happens, do we see that if, if people want to actually use more residential use, then a better zoning classification would have, to, you wouldn't use IRMX if you just wanted to do residential? Basically, we would, we would point them towards a different classification. The IRMX is really to have the reuse of the building for, you know, an industrial or non-residential use. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. And please let the record reflect Councilwoman Reynolds Brown and Councilwoman Bass, members of the committee are present. Any other questions for Mr. Gregorski? Seeing none, um, thank you, sir. Um, I believe we have a couple other people who asked to testify, Ms. Marconi. Madeline Shakamba and Tiffany Green. Please identify yourself and proceed. Uh, my name is Madeline Chicumba. A little more into the microphone, Madeline, please. My name is Madeline Chicumba. I represent the North of Washington Avenue Coalition. We are a registered community organization. Yeah, you, you still, it's, it's a little hard to hear in here. Just oh. right in the, and I don't know why they put those things on the microphone. All it did, I think, was muffle Can you hear the me voice now? more. That's better, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Madeline Chicumba. We are, uh, I'm a representative of North of Washington Avenue Coalition which is a registered community organization. We're not pleased with bill number 150168. The reason being is that we feel it is a job killer. <coughs> Once you get rid of I-2 and make it residential, 
It's like mixing oil with water. Residents are not going to want to be near industrial businesses. And you're going to hear them cry, not in my backyard. That means industrial areas will soon become all residential. Residential areas are not creating jobs. Their jobs that they create, temporary. They're nothing but construction jobs. Exist for maybe, what, 14 months? And then they're gone. We are looking for job-sustaining jobs. That's what we want, sustaining jobs. We have the highest poverty rate, highest city, the highest poverty rate in the country. And we're thinking of ter turning our industrial areas into residential areas. Why isn't the city spending more time doing some kind of study that would encourage industrial things to come into the city? I'm not talking about manufacturing. I'm talking about people who make uh, electronic components. I mean, it's about 30 different things that people can do in this city that is not even being encouraged. I had a list of them. All right. <clears throat> Such as industrial components. Um, Financial, uh, I don't want financial, because we have enough financial. That's we are a service-oriented community. We need to become a good producing community, okay? There are nearly 30 different objects that can be produced in this city in industrial areas. We need to concentrate on bringing these things in to create jobs. I just read an article in the Fed Reserve Court of Review. Is it here? Talking about a housing bubble that's soon to come back because the government has done nothing to correct the previous housing bubble. What are you going to do when that bubble hit and you have all this housing stock with nobody in it? It would be another Detroit, another Las Vegas, and still have even a higher poverty rate. Please do not turn this into an industrial, turn industrial into residential. It's not going to help us. We need to do a study to encourage jobs to come into this into this community and not to destroy the areas where jobs can be sent and be produced, okay? <clears throat> the U.S. Census showed that last year we had the lowest, no, I'm sorry. The U.S. Census showed that last year the number of cars in our area was 67% of people had two uh, had cars. The proposal for this, no parking for certain things, like eating establishments. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, excuse me. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay, these are some of the industries you can bring in. Electrical equipment. Oh, come on. Mr. Cumber, uh, let me just interrupt, so, just so you understand, as the councilman Squill was just saying here, this <coughs> bill actually makes it more difficult to do residential. No, it doesn't. Yes. Councilman, may, maybe you could explain that, please. Yeah, if before, the way the bill was written, IRMX, if it, was, if it was zoned IRMX, they could actually do the whole development residential. This does not allow that anymore. You must have industrial use, you must have commercial use in that building that would help bring jobs and create jobs into that area. So this bill actually makes it harder to do residential. It doesn't convert that to a residential use building. And therefore, I don't know if you were listening to Mr. Gregorski earlier, uh, it was more with the intent of having light industrial and bringing jobs into an area than turning these buildings into a 100% residential building. And that's why, that's why this change was made, sort of what you're saying, and you're sort of giving credit to the legislation. Okay, well, I'm, like I said, also, why is there no parking allowed for certain establishment? We have, a, in our area, especially Washington Avenue, we have a there huge impact in terms of where you do not allow parking. And, it, and we do allow parking, it's now one to three instead of one to two. That means for every 100 units, you're gonna have 30, only 30 parking spaces instead of 50. Now, what are the other cars going to be parking? The creation of this is to have local people working in these, in these facilities, to have neighborhood people working in these light industrial places that we're bringing in 
uh, companies that were bringing into these type of buildings. That's the way it was done years ago and it was it worked very well. So at this point, we're looking to create jobs in those communities, especially the communities that need it, surrounding these industrial sites, and to have people be able to go to those jobs who live close by. And that's the intent of this. And, and we hope, listen, maybe they may, may mean it, need a change in the future if we see that this, we need to alter something along the way. But this is a new zoning classification that came under the new code, and we believe these changes will really meet the intent of that zoning and therefore enable people to do work in these type of facilities and not just have them as residential units. Well, we have a problem right now in that a residential unit is now on the table that want to put 113 units. Luxury. Okay, luxury units, condos in our area. Would that one work uh, in IRMX? Parking, that wouldn't pertain in this well, it's an I2. zoning clarification. It's, it's an I-2, and, and they have to come to us for a variance. Right. Okay. They still do. The ICRMX does not affect the R I I2. That building, if it's zoned I2, you still need a variance to do that. No, no I'm saying with your current code that you're asking. That this make this doesn't automatically change every I2, the IRMX. Only the ones who already zoned that are zoned IRMX. So you, you can't just say every I-2 is going to be IRMX. That's not the way. That would have to be reclassified into a different zoning classification. Or if it stays I-2, you would need a variance to put a residential use in there where the community would have input. Well, that's what our problem is, is that we, I read this bill <clears throat> to encourage, to resulting in encouragement of changing I-2 to ICRMX. And that's a problem. IRMX. Okay. I mean, and, uh, that, that would be done through a planning. They have the planning stages you go through and you remap the areas throughout the city. Yeah, they had a planning area in which, we were, which we were not invited to. And I understand it has already been put before. It's being put, going to be ready to be put before the, uh, the council. And we were not even in on the input. I mean, that would be introduced by your council member and they would, they would decide on, on the remapping of those areas and hopefully your input would get put into that legislation. I hope so. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ms. Green, yes, you want to identify yourself and proceed? Tiffany Green, Concerns is a Board of Breeze. Um, this is not the way we read the bill, okay? And I think that this bill does allow for residential. This building that we're talking about, which is 2401 Washington Avenue, is an I-2. And it does allow for, this bill would allow them to build 131 luxury. Yes, it does, sir. And I'm saying to you that the IRMX is being put into the bill. It's being put into the bill to allow residential. We have a, we have a site at 1601 Washington Avenue that was recently turned over by the common pleas, okay, at this particular point. If this particular new zoning classification is allowed, then they would be able to rezone that particular property, IRMX. I went to the Planning Commission meeting, and at the Planning Commission meeting, they admitted that this, this particular bill would allow residential on Washington Avenue. The residents have stated many times that they do not want wa residential on Washington but or around the city. We're saying, to, I'm saying to the other city council people that you must be mindful of this because no one is aware of this bill in terms of industrial buildings around the city. We have a lot of industrial buildings and this IRMX takes away, it's a buy right policy. A buy right policy which has been heavily implemented into the new zoning code allows for, says that there's no community meeting, no community vote, no ability to appeal the process. I, I don't see how we can sit here in the spirit of Selma and say residents have the right to vote. When you, this bill is a, is a by right bill. If the residents have challenged numerous times, I know on Washington Avenue, I can't say around the city, but on Washington we've challenged numerous uh, residential uh, air, uh, complexes on Washington Avenue and said they don't want it, then it stated on one of, we were reading on, online that uh, from some of the blogs and some of the other people, and they were stating that, uh, well, now we're going to have a bill come through saying IRMX through the Planning Commission so that the developers will be able to build and rezone. Uh, at our last rezoning meeting, we only had seven African American. the first one had seven African Americans at the rezoning meeting, the second one only had about 10 or 15. So the community is not really educated on this, uh, right? When we got on Word Radio yesterday, uh, the people did not really know. 
about this bill. There was no committee meetings about this bill. And so therefore, this bill, regardless of what you say, is a buy right bill. And if people are not included in the zoning, in the rezoning or the remapping, you're taking away their right to have a vote, a community meeting, and the right to appeal this process. Do you want Mr. Gorsi to come up and address something? Or? Would you be willing yeah, Mr. Mr. Gorsi, to come up? Could you come and I just want to say, this bill, if we don't change it, you're a lot worse off if they change it to... No, we're not. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Okay, okay. let Mr. Mr. Gorski... Go ahead. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Cumber, okay. let, let Mr. Sure. Gorski... Okay. So yeah, we're, yeah, we're trying to done. be on the same Thank page you. here. You heard the concerns that were raised. Could you address them, sir, please? Uh, Marty Gorski, Philadelphia City Planning Commission. Um, this will not change any existing zoning to IRMX. Uh, this would right. change a district that has been ex in existence since we got the new code in 2012. As written, the IRMX didn't do what it was supposed to do, uh, and this is getting it more into what we're looking for. We want it to be a mixed-use classification. This doesn't rezone it anywhere. Uh, okay. Where it is zoned IRMX, they will, if they go to get new permits, they will be required to use non-residential. And, and, and the concern was raised about the I-2. If it's I-2, it doesn't automatically become no. IRMX, right? No, there's, okay. no, there's right. no automatic switch over from okay. I-2. And, and also, if, it, if this bill, if we don't, the bill that we have introduced, if it stays the same and this bill doesn't change, wouldn't it be, if something is IRMX, more likely be residential because they could actually do it as all residential? We're trying to change that. But I think the misunderstanding is this will allow residential in these areas as of right, which it doesn't do. As the IRMX is written today, we've seen a, a couple of instances of where people have built 60-foot tall townhomes for all 100 percent residential use. And we didn't want that to be the case, and we heard complaints from the communities about it. And so we're trying to fix it so that does not happen. We're actually doing oh, okay. what you want in this bill. And if you want, after the hearing, I could sit down and we'll explain it to you step okay. by step. Well, yeah, we'd like, to, uh, we'd like to hear that, because if we misunderstood it, then if that's what she, you're saying, then we did misunderstand it, and I don't mind apologizing. But yes, I would like for you to explain okay. it to us, because that we definitely did not. So that you can have that conversation. Well, we, yeah, I, well, I, I, I would have that conversation. Maybe Mr. Kumba, I feel as though I don't mind having a conversation with you, um, Councilman, but my, my issue at this point is that I went to the Planning Commission, I sat in on the meeting, and that is not what was actually stated at the Planning Commission meeting. And I saw none of you at the Planning Commission meeting. And they made it very clear that this would allow residential usage in industrial buildings, okay, and that they were going to have niche, this was explained to me by Alan Greenberg, niche zoning where certain buildings would be able to be zoned residential. And the thing about it is at this point, I asked him who would be doing the niche zoning remapping. And he was he said, well, probably the Planning Commission. Well, the thing about it is the Planning Commission is not inclusive. They don't invite a lot of the community members to the meeting, and they simply present. I'm saying, I'm asking if you can hold up on this bill, because it's very, as you can see, it's very, a lot of people do not really understand this bill, and ask you to hold up on this, and let us have a little bit more conversation regarding this bill before it's passed through, because there is two different messages coming out of the Planning Commission, and, and, and I'm sure you, you, don't, you, you have good faith intentions, but I'm saying there's a different, I'm, but I'm saying there's two different messages coming from the Planning Commission and yourself. Excuse me, it's, it's the same exact message. Yeah. We're given the same exact message as the Planning Commission is giving. The message is that, yes, IRMX does allow residential use in an, if it's zoned IRMX. If you're planning commission and you're having your meetings now to rezone your areas throughout the district there, you need to be involved and say, we don't want these properties IRMX. We want to keep them whatever it is that you think is best for your community. And you need to make sure you, and, and if, you know, if I represent you as your council person, make sure that that's not rezoned in any other way. But if we rezone this IRMX and, and hold this and keep it under the old standard, you're a lot worse off. So you're a lot worse off because they could do the whole process property residential, and that's not what you want. So, I mean... But it gives the council person the final the, op the option to rezone as... It gives the council person the option to rezone uh, industrial building, residential... We already rather the, have that option. Rather, rather, rather the, you, you may, but the reality of it is that at this point, the 
you really don't have that option yes, at this we point. Do. Because we have, if it's, no, we have it. We have it now. I understand you have the option, but we, if you if you keep the way it is, ICMX and IC and no, if, it's and IRMX. I, I know I understand IRMX. I'm saying to you currently, as it stands right now, sir, for us on Washington Avenue, all right, many of the buildings are in ICMX. Many of the buildings, okay? They're not our IRMX, okay? okay? Or they're I2 or I3. We're saying at this particular point, this bill will keep those buildings industrial instead of residential because at, at this point, because when we go through the remapping and the community say that they, are you saying to me, if the community says they don't want, they don't want, they want them to stay industrial, then we will have the right to keep them industrial? Yes. Okay, so why do we need to have an IRMX? Because IRMX is another facet of the zoning code that allows a mixed use in certain areas that is that is wanted in those communities. So this, there's already an IRMX in the code. Right. We understand that, but the, but right now the remapping has not taken place in our area, right. and because of the remapping, we're saying that we don't want to offer that option because it brings friction in the neighborhood. They already have on the who, option. Now, That's what you're missing. Yeah. You know, the this is a buy right, right bill, sir. No, it's a, uh, you're, no. Yes, you're it misunderstanding is. the whole thing. Yeah, I'm not. Well, we are. We are on the opposite side of Washington Avenue. Okay. I know where you are. Uh, okay, I know you do. I'm just <laughs> the rest of people may not know. Okay, so that's why. Our problem is this, is that the remapping, from what I understand, for our area, was already done. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, I, now, I don't finish. know that. See, can I just interrupt here a second? You're talking about remapping and in individual areas. We're talking about here a zoning classification, yeah, okay? I'm just saying, and they're make, hold on, hold okay. on. And they're making adjustments in that particular zoning classification, not some of the others that I'm hearing that this is, am I saying this right, Mr. Gregorowski? And so we're just talking about this. And Ms. Green, as far as you saying you having the option, there already is an option for any kind of zoning that's in the code. And then it would be up to that individual council member whether they wanted to put in a suggestion of, of changing that. But there's only, we're dealing with specifically the RMX. And as Councilman Squilla and I think Mr. Gregorski is, is saying, this bill would make it harder to do all residential no. in, a, in a list. So it seems like it's addressing what right. you're concerned in this particular zoning classification. Hear me out. If you rezone, hear me out. If you rezone a building, IRMX, you, it turns into a by right policy, which takes away the rights of the people to have a community then, meeting. If then, you rezone it, IRMX, on, sir. Then you yes. oppose if a bill came in the city council. You cannot oppose. If it's IRMX, which allows for residential, it turns into a buy right policy. If if it is changed, Ms. Green. If, but if, the thing about is, is it that would be changed. some of the council people want to, make some, I mean, I'm not saying council people, I'm saying some people want to turn these buildings okay. into IRMX. And if, if, if yes. there is a different zoning classification and a bill is introduced to change in your specific area to RMX, IRMX, you can come and oppose that then if that's what you want. But we're not talking about a particular area here. We are talking about a whole classification citywide. And if there's whatever is, whenever there's a bill to be put in, and you're certainly here a lot, so you know this, if there's a bill put in to change a zoning classification of a given area, the community has the right to come in here and oppose that. That's that's all we're talking about. Can I say something? Uh, I understand that, and I will be meeting with. A little bit more. I will be saying again. I will be meeting with uh, Councilman Squealer to, uh, to straighten this out. But what I want to say is this: is that on these rezoning hearings that have been having by the city planning, they all structured, just like the zoning was structured. And then we get a zoning code that half of us had nothing to say about because when it came to the meetings, they knew what area they wanted to push you towards. And now on this remapping that I attended with her group and I attended one on my side, it's structured. They didn't tell people what ICRMX is. They didn't tell them what the CMS is. And, right, well, and they have them writing okay. in there on the map. You write in the map what you want you there. And right. these people are writing in things they know nothing about. Okay, on this one, okay. though, I think we but, tried yeah, to explain I agree with you, and I will be talking with Councilman Squeal. Okay. I, I think that I this, no I just want to say I for the record, I think that you're miss... Me, and I will be meeting with you hold after hold this day. Okay, I'm sorry. I think that you're misrepresenting this, because if it's not necessary for IRMX, and you can, and the council people are open to maybe putting through any type of zoning classification they want, then why do we have to include IRMX? RMX because first of all, retail on this level is mainly like you can't do industrial and retail in the same in business. The code. 
We're Sir, just def we this is a buy right policy, and you're not saying this correctly. This is a buy right policy, and I'm asking council members to hold off on this because this bill is very dangerous in terms of taking away the rights of having a community vote and community meetings. IRMX. No, I do understand zoning, and I'm saying to you, what was said at the planning commission is not what's being said here. Okay. Well, we're okay, and I think that it needs to be held off. Okay. I'm, I'm asking. All right. I'm asking the council people to quiet. Thank you. Well, can we just have? Uh, I think we have this. Uh, this is just one question. Hold, hold on one second. Just Ms. one question Should for clarity of the record. Uh, Ms. Green. Yes. You said several times you referred to what was said at the planning commission. Yes. Uh, what was said at the planning commission was that in response to a question? Yes. My question was was that would this bill allow for residential use? on Washington, I was specifically talking about our area, on Washington Avenue, and they said, yes, it would. And then I asked, how would this go about? They said it would do niche, niche zoning. My, my, my question okay. was, was it in response to a question? And so, to, so the statement that was made was in response to a question. Yes, uh, because to the, Alan Greenberg. Because the answer was affirmative, does not mean that's the intent of the bill or the intent of any future bill. Okay, my question to you is why do we need IRMX if we already, if you have the power to submit in a, a zoning uh, Purpose, I, change? I, 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 because this is around the city now, and a lot of people do not know about this bill. I, I, I get it. Okay. Um, aside from your concerns about Washington Avenue and what may or may not happen, you understand the intent of this bill? I understand the intent of the bill. Do, do, I'm do, saying do, to you do, that do, at this particular do, point. Do, do you believe that this bill? is targeted toward Washington Avenue. I, I do believe that at this particular point, there was an, a common police court overturned, a common police court overturned a decision not, regarding I'm 1601 I'm Washington not, Avenue, and on, I'm and not, it was I'm stated not, that. I, I'm, I'm not really gonna go through all that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, this do, is bill do, one, do, this do, is do bill. Do you believe that this bill is targeted toward Washington Avenue? I believe that this bill is to help developers put in IRMX, which is residential usage in industrial buildings, and this would allow them to begin the to question, start to do a buy right policy. The question you asked the Planning Commission was regarding Washington Avenue? The question I asked was, would this allow them to put, because Washington Avenue is considered, okay. hear, hear I, me I, out, I, sir. I, I do want to answer sir, I'm going to ask you a question. I, I, I Washington Avenue right now guess, is. Guess, guess what? I okay. Don't need, I don't need the answers to my question. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank right. you very thank much. Thank you all for okay. your testimony. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to testify on Bill 150168? This bill is wrong. Seeing none. Uh, again, for the for the committee, uh, who might got here a little later, 150145 is being held to the call of the chair. Ms. Uh, Marconi, please, the next title of the next bill. Five six. Bill number 150145, or excuse me, I'm sorry, no, no one's held. Five six. One five zero zero five. I'm sorry. One five zero zero five six. An ordinance amending subcode A of Title Four of the Philadelphia Code entitled the Philadelphia Administrative Code by amending Chapter Three entitled Permits and Title Nine of the Philadelphia Code entitled Regulations of Businesses, Trades, and Professions by amending Chapter Nine Dash Two Two Hundred entitled Commercial Activities on Streets to add an exemption, add definitions, and provide for the use and regulation of mobile food vendors in certain areas, all under certain terms and conditions. Good morning, Councilman Greenlee, members morning. of the Rules Committee. I'm Marty Gregorski, Division Director with the Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill Number 150056, which was introduced in the City Council on January 29, 2015, by Council Member Squillo. Bill Number 150056 amends the Philadelphia Zoning Code by amending the Administrative Code Section A 301.2.5 Zoning and Use Registration Permits which will now read that a zoning or use registration permit shall not be required for mobile food vendors licensed under, licensed under section 9-203 of this code and operating on privately owned property, provided that such vendors comply with all the requirements of section 9-203 parent 10. <coughs> Bill number 150056 amends title nine, the streets code, by establishing the definition for a mo mobile food vendor, which reads, a self-contained food service operation located in a readily movable motorized vehicle with wheels or in a vehicle with wheels capable of being towed by a motorized vehicle designed for the preparation, display, and service of food and beverages to patrons, but not including push carts. The bill then expands to state that mobile food vendors may operate on private property, including property of a university, school, or hospital with the permission of the property owner or lessee. 
The bill also addresses fees and regulations through the streets code. The Philadelphia City Planning Commission considered Bill Number 150056, that's meeting of February 17, 2015, a recommended approval. And I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. And I understand there is a, an amendment to this bill also. Is that right? I understand there was an amendment. Okay. Was that the administration? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Um, any questions for yeah, Mr. Gorski? Councilwoman Tasco. Would you explain this to the bills to me, please? And what does that mean for all neighborhoods? Okay. What this does is would take mobile food carts, which really have no place in either the zoning code or the uh, streets code now, and, and put them in a position. So before, we weren't sure what to do with them. Um, now what it does is it says since they're not permanent structures, they don't need to have permits, but they do need licenses. Uh, I understand that the way that the bill read that you would have to choose the places where the food carts would be permitted for licensing, but once they're permitted in that certain area, each council person could put them in their area, then they would be able to get licenses, and there's a number of code compliances that they must meet. This is for existing uh, carts? This would be for existing or new carts, but they would only be where they were re allowed to be put by council. Okay, so I have a ninth district, don't have a lot of carts. Now all of a sudden I can get a lot of carts on the street? No. Not unless you choose to have those carts by creating areas where the carts can go. Yeah. Okay, so I, I have, to, have create to create them. Yeah. Yeah, the way it's set up, oh, I'm sorry, point information. Um, the, the way it's set up is the council person would have to select these areas if they want them to be used. Also, it's a way of legalizing what is actually being done already in a lot of the areas throughout town without any licenses. So if, if a council person or an area doesn't want them in certain areas, they won't be there. If they think there's an area where these food trucks can go to, they could make those spots, designated spots for the food trucks, and they would have to get a license to get approval to go there. Right now, they're going to certain areas, and there's really no rules or regulations for guiding them. We want to make sure that we put them in place so we have regulations. Now, does this supersede the legislation we passed some years ago? Uh, for instance, in my district where I restricted uh, sidewalk vending in my councilmanic district, would this supersede that? This would not because what this is doing is it's placing it on private property. So rather than having them on the sidewalk or in the streets operating, this is where you could have them in a parking lot right. uh, as long as they don't take away parking spaces on a level. Um, but it would have to be only with council approval. So your, the, the bill that you put in years ago would stay because this only relates to private property. Council. Yes, yeah. good morning. Councilman Reynolds Brown. So I continue to see, witness, and hear up close and personal the challenges district council members face with regards to issues like the one uh, on the table. So my question is, what are the protocols or, or practices in your department where efforts are done to inform, enlighten, and educate citizens who are going to be favorably or unfavorably impacted by uh, measures like the one this morning? This bill, truth be told, is, is a streets bill. We don't do any licensing at the plan, Planning Commission for this. The only reason we had to take it is because it was removing a zoning permit requirement that didn't actually exist before. However, whenever there is a uh, situation where we have any kind of rezoning bills, where we have any kind of changes to the code, we, we always make efforts to contact all the interested parties. We have meetings, you know, every, every week we have some kind of meeting out in, in the communities. Um, we have large meetings concerning remappings um, that, you know, are informed by the feedback we're getting. We're not going there to a meeting saying this is what you're going to get. We're saying what would you like to have and here are some of our ideas. Uh, so there's a constant give and take between us and the communities and we do make efforts to inform them. This is kind of a niche bill that, you know, it's, it's, it's while there are impacts to it, they won't occur until these districts are placed on the plan. This is a way to license them, which we weren't, we weren't able to license them before, these food trucks. Uh, but what this does is it will allow you as a council person to put it in an area and then have a place where food trucks can go. So discuss that in greater detail. Um, drill down what that means. Does that mean you do emails? Does that mean you do door knocking? Does that mean you go to the local RCO? Does that mean you go to the local church? Because in, in, in if you don't layer the approach in reaching folk, you're going to miss somebody. So talk about what that means and how you do it. Well, we're generally not going door to door, but we're interacting with all the RCOs via email. 
Uh, we, we do go out, we have flyering that we do for the, for the bigger meetings, the district plan meetings and the rezoning meetings. We post properties or areas that are going to be rezoned on you know, telephone poles to let people know that hearings are coming up. Um, phone calls, you know, we have a list of all the RCOs. We keep track of all the RCOs, so it's easier to blast out an email saying this is going on. Okay. Those are the things we try to do. And then you sort of rely on the RCOs or the leadership of the RCOs to get that information funneled to the membership, correct? Correct. There, there are times when we're interacting with, you know, people individually. If, if your block is being rezoned, we, we try to get down and talk to the folks on that block, even if they're not represented by an RCO. But mm -hmm. yes, we, we do rely on the RCOs to some extent to funnel down some of that information. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Are Chairman. Are people clear about what private property means? Because some, some merchants believe the sidewalk in front of their store is their private property. It's not true. Um, basically, the, you would need a license from the streets department to put anything on. A, on, on a sidewalk, which is generally considered part of the street. Uh, this would have to be within the property lines of okay. the parcel itself. Thank you. Councilman Heenan. And uh, I, I just want to be, be clear for the record. Uh, again, you state, and so you've improved the Planning Commission and uh, the city has in, improved their notification requirements uh, throughout the RCO process as it evolves and it gets uh, a lot more specific here. Uh, there was no notification required at all uh, previously. So now this actually is more inclusive to the neighborhood, more uh, transparent, which allows, uh, well, not allows, it requires notifications uh, in a similar way than other developers and uh, for RCOs, is that correct? Yeah, the RCOs set up a process that didn't exist formally before. So right. now we have a formal way to contact you know, the folks. We have a name for every RCO. We have an email address for every RCO. And, that, and we didn't have that before. We relied on, oh, you're the district planner? Which are the people we should be talking to? And this is a little more formalized, so uh, it makes it easier for us to pick. Agree. It's, it's consistent yeah, with, with past practices of uh, other development throughout the city. Correct. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Grigorski. Um, Ms. Marconi, I think we have four other people. Why don't you call all four names? Uh, George Bieber, Deb Dasani, Jamie Landers, and Rob Mitchell. You all want to come up, please? After these four, is there anyone else here who wants to testify on this bill? Thank you. Okay, these will be the last four. If we're one short, if somebody could just sit in the back and then come back up. Okay, whoever, I think Mr. Bieber's name was called first. Yeah, good morning. Thank you, members of council, for having us here to talk about Bill 15056. We're in favor of it. Uh, this bill is, seeks to make it easier for mobile food vendors to operate in Philadelphia. As of now, restrictions make it difficult for mobile food vendors to operate in certain parts of the city. This holds back growth in a growing industry and denies property owners the opportunity to pursue economic opportunities by allowing mobile food vendors on their premises. Allowing mobile food vendors, vendors sorry, greater a geographic scope would offer residents throughout Philadelphia access to affordable and convenient dining options and would generally benefit the city's economy. In addition to allowing mobile food industry to grow in a way that will contribute to the cultural enrichment of the city. This bill will establish a fixed definition of what a mobile food vendor is and will provide mobile food vendors with specific legal status. This will be useful in terms of regulating mobile food vendors and uh, distinguishing them from other types of street vendors. It will also allow mobile food vendors to operate on private property throughout the city, subject to certain restrictions. Uh, this food, or the bill will ensure mobile food vendors will operate in a respectful manner. They will not be permitted to operate on historic sites. Their signage and exterior generators would be restricted, and they would be regulated in ways as to prevent uh, operations from, distur uh, from disturbing traffic and public safety. We hope uh, that you agree with this bill and vote in favor of it. Okay. Thank you. All right, before you say, are all sure. four of you speaking in favor? Or? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so you heard Mr. Beaver's testimony. We don't, we don't have to repeat those, but if you'd like to add anything, but, yeah. or if you just want to say you're in favor, that's fine too. Yeah, I, I'm certainly in favor of this. Please say your name. 
<coughs> oh, it's Debbie Dasani, mm -hmm. and I have a food truck as well. Um, my food truck is an Indian food truck, and <coughs> based on the responses I've seen from and questions I've gotten from a lot of customers as I vend in different areas of the city, people are always asking, why aren't you guys, for example, you know, we want to see more ethnic food out there, Indian, the Indian community, everyone knows that Indian food is very desirable, would like to see more of it, and we'd, I would probably, I would say to them, you know, talk to you, local representative, talk to you, your business associations to get us in your neighborhood. I have done, over the past 60 years, done um, events in various na different neighborhoods in the city, and it really encourages me to want to keep doing this and being able to provide residents of the city with the kinds of food I produce. Um, as food truck operators, um, I'm literally blown away by the quality of food that I see offered by our food trucks. And I feel that if you support this bill for us, you will make our lives very easy. Right now, we're so restricted. There are so many food trucks not able to continue operating because of the restrictions we have in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you. Again, if you'd like to please state your name and go. My name is Jamie Landers. I am a resident of Philadelphia, and I own Luscious Bakery Food Truck. I came to the city five years ago as an aerospace engineer, and last year with the economic downturn, um, we had to do a reduction in force where I was laid off. Opening a food truck was a great opportunity for me. It allowed me to start my own business. It allowed me to employ other residents of Philadelphia, teach them skills and trades, as well as bring an affordable product to underutilized areas. We've seen lots of areas, such as West Philadelphia, that have welcomed us into the community, whether it be for a church celebration, a hospital function, or the Friends of Morris Park Easter egg hunt this Sunday. We've seen that the community members enjoy the food trucks in their neighborhoods, and it allows them to have affordable access to different types of cuisines and foods. It also would allow to bring restaurants on wheels to all sorts of different functions and help re revitalize areas that, for instance, at night don't have many options for food. It also creates a festival-type atmosphere when we have private lots that will allow food truck pods, so several food trucks on a rotating schedule to come in. It also allows economic opportunity for those private lot owners to you know, make a profit to see that these abandoned or emptied lots are used in a way that benefits both small business owners and members of the community. I hope you vote in favor of this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, uh, just to be clear, we represent collectively. Say your name, please. Oh, my name is Robert Mitchell. Uh, I own the Cow and the Curd Food Truck. Uh, we're here to represent the Philadelphia Mobile Food Association and its over 100 members. I came to Philadelphia in 1990 uh, on a football scholarship to Temple University, and I never left. Um, I'm now the owner of the small business, The Cow and the Curd. Uh, I own a commercial property in Fishtown. I'm a homeowner in Northern Liberties. My wife is a business owner in the city of Philadelphia, and my two children are just starting the school process. Um, I'm here to ask your support on this bill because, first of all, it champions small business, which is incredibly important for the growth uh, in the city. It stimulates the economy and it offers consumers choices. And uh, we ask for your support okay. and hope okay. you can see our Thank vision. you, sir. And Councilwoman Bass and I particularly congratulate you on your great choice of university. <laughs> <laughs> you know where we went. <laughs> Any, you went to Temple? Well, I did too. The city, the city <laughs> school. <laughs> uh, any, <laughs> any questions for any of these witnesses? Thank you very much. Good luck on your, your businesses, sir. Again, no one else here to testify on this bill. We now move to the next bill. Ms. Marconi. Bill number 150170, an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by Revising Requirements for Accessory Signs located with an area bounded by Juniper Street, East Pass Young Avenue, and Mifflin Street under certain terms and conditions. Um, 7 -0. Ms. Grugorski. 
Good morning, Councilman Greenlee, members of the Rules Committee. I'm Marty Gregorski, Division Director of the Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill Number 15170, which was introduced in the City Council on March 5th, 2015, by Councilmember Squillow. Bill Number 15170 amends the Philadelphia Zoning Code by revising requirements for accessory signs located within an area bounded by Juniper Street, East Pass Junk Avenue, and Mifflin Street. The bill amends the zoning code by permitting a building in the CMX 2.5 neighborhood commercial district to have one sign extend above the roof line of a structure if the property is at least two street frontages. The sign may be internally illuminated and cannot exceed 90 square feet and may only have nine feet located above the roof line. Bill number 15170 is in response to a new sign located at the corner of Juniper and East Pass Yonk Avenue, accessory to a restaurant. The Zoning Board of Adjustment reviewed this application in November of 2014 and denied the request for a variance. The, applica the applicant could have appealed the ZBA decision to the Court of Common Pleas within 30 days, but did not exercise that right. The sign was then installed without the benefit of permits, and a violation was issued by the Department of License and Inspections. While the sign itself is not inherently objectionable, the City Planning Commission believes that a legislative approval of this type may set a bad pre precedent for future actions. The Philadelphia City Planning Commission, at its <coughs> meeting of March 24, 2015, recommended that Bill Number 15170 not be approved. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, anyone else here to testify on uh, this bill? Seeing none, our last bill, Ms. Marconi, please. Bill number 150091, an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by creating an overlay district entitled WWA uh, West Washington Avenue overlay to include certain areas of land within the vicinity of West Washington Avenue under certain terms and conditions. Good morning, morning, Councilman Greenlee, members of the Rules Committee, Marty Gregorski, Division Director of the Development Division of the Philadelphia City Planning Commission. I'm here to testify on Bill Number 150091, which was introduced in the City Council on February 12, 2015, by Council Member Johnson. Bill Number 150091 amends Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning by creating an overlay district entitled the Slash WWA West Washington Avenue overlay for the area bounded by Broad Street, Carpenter Street, 19th Street, Kimball Street, 23rd Street, Carpenter Street, 24th Street, Kimball Street, 25th Street, Ellsworth Street, 24th Street, Alter Street, 19th Street, Ellsworth Street, 18th Street, Alter Street, 17th Street, Ellsworth Street, 16th Street, Alter Street, 15th Street, and Ellsworth Street. Bill number 150091 creates an overlay district for, for Washington Avenue west of Broad Street to prohibit the following uses. Detentional and correctional facilities, Re-entry facilities, adult-oriented facilities, personal credit establishments, non-accessory parking, all uses in the vehicle and vehicular equipment sales and services use category, moving and storage facilities, junk and salvage yards and buildings, and trucking and transportation terminals. These uses are generally considered to be detrimental to the redevelopment of Washington Avenue, and an overabundance of such uses could contribute to a blighting influence on the Carter. Philadelphia Law Department suggests an amendment that would fix a mapping error in the original bill. The Philadelphia City Planning Commission, at its meeting of March 17, 2015, recommended that Bill Number 150091 be approved for approval as amended, with the proviso that a comprehensive zoning remapping of the corridor occur, and that the WWA West Washington Avenue overlay be repealed at the time the remapping of the corridor is enacted. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any questions for Mr. Gregorski on this bill? Does this, um, does this bill um, uh, require that any of these businesses presently located in that area have to close? No. Every business that's there that is existing with permits is entitled to move, fo move on. It's, it's grandfathered. It doesn't have to move. It doesn't have to move. Okay. Is your bill Councilman Swell? No, it's Councilman Johnson. Councilman Johnson. Okay. What was the question? I asked if... Uh, were any of the facilities that would be prohibited currently existing in that uh, site? Mr. Cobb, your office? No? Okay. We'll try to get you that answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grigorski. Uh, Ms. Montgomery, why don't you call the next three witnesses? Uh, Lauren Vitas, Ivan Tancredi, and Claudia Sherrod.
I think Ms. Sherrod had to run across the street. Yeah, Ms. Little Page, I know you're not Ms. Sherrod, but that's okay. Yes. <laughs> you can say, you're pinch hitting, I assume? Yes, please. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, good morning, Councilman. My name is Lauren Vitas. I am here in my capacity as chair of the South of South Neighborhood Association to lend our support uh, for the bill presently before you. A little you. closer or a little louder. This, I, th somebody was trying to improve these microphones, and I think all they did was muffle everything. They're so. terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Um, this bill has <laughs> wide support in uh, the community, both from your neighbors. I provided some letters of support from residents, uh, and Ivan is here representing the Washington Avenue Property Owners Association so I'll let him speak in that regard. Um, but what this bill does is really prevent a lot of noxious industrial uses that would be allowed by right. Um, we've been working with the Planning Commission and the Councilman's Office to, to talk about the future of Washington Avenue and some of the many changes. Uh, and during conversations, these by right uses came up as things that the neighborhood did not want to see. Um, you know, we, uh, we appreciate the concern there are uh, about keeping an economic engine on the corridor, but when you have self-storage facilities that open up that are employing one or two people and it's just car traffic and there's no sort of street activation, those are the kind of businesses that aren't going to help uh, help support the local communities. Um, so the South of South Neighborhood Association, as well as many near near residents, uh, are fully supportive of this, of this bill, uh, and we request that the committee pass it with a uh, favorable recommendation. Thank you. Whoever would like to go next? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Ivan Tancredi. I'm president of Washington Avenue Property Owners Association. I want to thank everyone here today for allowing me to speak on behalf of Washington Avenue Property Owners Association. Most of us have been on the avenue for many years. I personally have been on the avenue for 33 years. Tony Bisicchia for two generations, Donna Tucci family for two generations, Michael Mazzola for two generations, Joe Versa for two generations, Frank Cellini for over 30 years, and I can go on and on. As property owners, we have been an integral part of the growth of the Washington Avenue. Transformed over the years, and it is extremely important that we continue to have input in the new businesses that will join the Avenue. One of Washington Avenue great assets is its easy access of, for uh, consumers. Just minutes from the Schuylkill Expressway, I-95, and the South Jersey Bridges, we are conveniently located. With Supreme Economics now rapidly increasing immediately around us, we are threatened to be strangled by our potential pending success. We must prepare for the coming wave with a plan that accommodates the avenue, the business, old and new, and the residents. Today, you are going to make an important decision that will impact Washington Avenue. Washington Property Owners Association is very concerned with the future of our properties. The overlay is extremely important to immediately impede all ill or unwanted businesses or influences. We, as a group, can make decisions that will impact our avenue. The overlay prevents users that impede developers from considering revitalizing our area. For example, a new methadone clinic, public storage, pawn shops, transmission shops, tax repairs, type places with <laughs> weather cars parked all over and on the sidewalks. The following users do not invite the markets to walk up a retail to restaurants that our growing neighborhood so desperately calls for. Detention correction facilities, adult entertainment facilities, pawn shops, checks, cashing, parking lots that aren't part of a retail establishment, killer storefronts and food traffic. Public storage on sightly aluminum sided buildings, a place that the renters visit once a month if that in and out. We need businesses to bring folks to the shopping areas. Think of the appeal of the U-Haul at 12 in Washington and what that's done to the area. Trucks parked all over the place, blocking the roads, the center lane, the bike lanes. Additionally, they don't bring jobs. Building new buildings does. All of the first floor retail bring good paying jobs. The dozen or so restaurants are coming to bring jobs. Public storage is dead wood for us and our surrounding neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Junkyards, enough said. Truck and transportation terminals. We want to prevent medical facilities such as the current methadone clinic. The methadone clinic is snuck in on us and is killing our businesses. The current facility is too small as evidenced by the line of patients lined up and waiting on the street. 
What if they got a new lease for a bigger facility on Washington Avenue? This is not something we want to occur. Animal users and child care. We want these facilities when the parking and loading issues are resolved with the new IR and MEG zoning. We're crafting together. But how the zoning is now to ask young kids to skid out of a double parked car, piss out one of our delivery trucks, and the other video game like Obstacle that conflicts all of us is insane. So the IRM zone will resolve that issue. Signs. We need a probably sign administration. The new IRMX provides guidelines. In the meantime, the plastering of buildings with cheap flat signs do not portray a clean obstacle, uh, I'm sorry, upscale avenue. With the coming of businesses such as family restaurants, finished retail, and professional supermarkets, all of which bring jobs and strengthen the economic of the neighborhood. Okay. You now heard where Washington Avenue Property Owners Association stands in support of the overlay. I would like, um, okay, it, Gloria had to leave, but uh, Albert Lonick, uh, Lowpage will speak on our behalf. Um, to summarize quickly, again, this overlay is important for the avenue. Most importantly, it prevents users that impede developers from revitalizing our area with unwanted business that will negatively affect the future of Washington Avenue. We need provisions that prevent medical clinics such as the methadone clinic. The IRMX that is in process to be approved is important to put the guidelines in place for the animal child facilities zoning as well as the sign administration, which will both improve the avenue for the future. Thank you for your time and cooperation in this very important matter that will affect all of us. We need to come together. Vote yes to the overlay for the future of Washington Avenue and the nearby neighborhoods. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Councilman, good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm reading this uh, document on behalf of Ms. Claudia Sherrod, who is the uh, Executive Director of, of South Philadelphia Homes in support of Bill 150091. Uh, good morning. The Board of South Philadelphia Homes and Point Breeze Grace Free Partnership strongly support Councilman Johnson's overlay for Washington Avenue. As a business, it is important that we have input in the new businesses coming into the avenue. Washington Avenue's greatest assets over the decades have been its easy access. Washington Avenue businesses have survived while competitors wilted because, unlike many competitors that rely solely on local residents support to support their businesses, Washington Avenue flourishes in the convenience of its location. Just minutes from the School Kill Expressway, I-95, South Jersey Bridges, Washington Avenue, property businesses thrive and is easy access. It appeals to a very broad circle. With supreme economics now rapidly increasing immediately around us, we are threatened to be strangled by our, our own potential pending success. We must prepare for the coming wave with a plan that accommodates the avenue. As residents and businesses alike, we must design a business strip amendable for all. Ms. Claudia Sherrod, Executive Director of South Philadelphia Homes and Point Breeze Grace Ferry Partnership. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Sherrod's letter will be made part of the record, as will some letters from residents and business people in the area. Thank uh, you. Ms. Uh, Ms. Villas, thank you. Ms. Villas, just one question. Um, what communication had there been on this bill, meetings, whatever, just in case there's any question? Yeah, I mean, I think know. this is this is part of a much, this bill is, you know, as the Planning Commission explained, is a temporary overlay. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of this bill specifically, I don't know if there's been meetings held on this bill specifically, but there have been a number of meetings, public meetings, held on Washington Avenue and the future of the avenue. Mm -hmm. um, our organization takes notice very, very seriously, uh, and we, we go, I, I think, above and beyond what the requirements are in terms of letting uh, our fellow coordinating RCOs or our, fe our, our fellow RCOs that overlap, particularly, uh, particularly NOAC, know that these meetings are, are, are happening. Um, so this is a multi-year process okay. that we've been going through. So, And I assume that through these meetings, these concerns were raised, which is one uh, of the results of the bill. Absolutely. And if right. anything, and I just I want to make this final point, this bill provides for more community input because if somebody wants to, oh, to put one of these noxious uses in place, they're going to have to go through the RCO process by right. getting a variance. So if anything, it broadens the amount of input from the public, doesn't dampen it. Okay. Point taken. Thank you. Any questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all very much. much.
Ms. Marconi, I think we have a couple more on. Want to testify? Um, Jake Leifer, Madeline Shacumba, and Tiffany Green. Okay, whoever would like to start, please identify yourself and proceed. Oh, thank you. Hi, my name is Jake Leifer. I'm a resident of uh, Point Breeze Avenue, uh, bordering Washington Avenue. Uh, as a resident of the neighborhood, uh, I've been participating in the planning process for Washington Avenue, helping to guide the future of the street uh, through the Philadelphia 2035 plan. Uh, additionally, I've created a website, uh, Washington Avenue Advocates, in support of bettering Washington Avenue with over 300 residents and business owners participating in this group. As a nearby resident and advocate for Washington Avenue, I'm in support of this overlay. The overlay will require community input for the uses that may not align with residents and businesses. This bill does not ban these uses, but rather requires community input. Myself, along with many of the residents, look forward to a mixed-use corridor supporting light industrial, residential, and commercial use. We also look forward to City Council introducing additional legislation to restripe Washington Avenue, creating a safe and thriving corridor for all residents who drive, walk, and bike. We are supportive of Councilman Johnson's bill for this overlay and believe it will require community input for those uses that have the most significant impact for the residents and businesses. Thank you, sir. Whoever would like to go next? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, Madeline Shikamba, <coughs> North Washington Avenue. <coughs> I am referring to Bill Number 150091. Why is this small area known as Washington Avenue being singled out to prohibit certain zoning? What is the real reason for this? Why is this overlay being put in place? Is this to encapsulate a certain section of Washington Avenue, which is zoned I-2, to cater to the wishes of a privileged few? <coughs> I have not received a definitive answer. What is going on within the boundary being defined that need the prohibition and protection of certain things, such as re-entry facilities, detention and correctional facilities, vehicular businesses, non-accessory parking, et cetera? What makes this area so much more special? I have lived within the two, within, I live within two blocks of Washington Avenue. I've been there for almost 40 years. These things never even came up. Why? Because Washington Avenue is not really suitable for it. Okay? So I'm just wondering why we have to, why all of a sudden this has become a problem. Currently, we have one, uh, one or two businesses that fall within the scope of vehicle and vehicular equipment at all. The one business I'm talking about right now is called Repair Cars. It's called Collision Care. Mm -hmm. And he employs 20 people. And all of his cars are in, on an enclosed lot. Yeah, very nice. I was told that, oh, but you have people repairing cars, you got this smell, smell of paint and this. This man, that's collision cars. He don't paint? Give me a break. Okay, again. Okay, just, okay. Let me just, let me just I understand one, that the Mr. Cumba, let me just state one thing for the record. If they're there already, I they're know they legal. will still be there. They're legal. They I can understand. stay there. They're not being put out. Okay. I'm not right. disagreeing. What I'm saying about they were complaining that such businesses uh, create uh, serious uh, problems for the neighborhood and talking about the paint smell and this smell. Now, he's been there for almost, what, 10, 15 years? There's never been no complaints. <clears throat> now, all of a sudden, they want to prohibit businesses like that because of that complaint? That's the only reason why I'm pointing it out. I understand he will be grandfathered then. Okay, I understand that the resident. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was told that this type of business is, and others in a similar character is a serious problem in Southwest Philadelphia, which is located in the same councilman district. I understand that the residents that have made numerous complaints have made new complaints there. If this is the case, why isn't Southwest Philadelphia included in the proposal? Why only Washington Avenue? I can't support this request. We recently learned about the overlay. North of Washington Avenue is a registered community group whose boundary includes Washington Avenue. We were not consulted about this overlay before it was put in. Now we were being asked to support it. We declined because there had been no community meetings, at least on our side of the North of Washington Avenue, for input on this important matter. The residents on North and the South side of North of Washington Avenue appeared not to have been aware of it, and it's certain if the support is there and the reason given for the changes uh, are made clear to them, they might support it. 
Our discussion with groups from both sides, from the, uh, from the side, south side, I'm sorry, of Washington Avenue indicated that the situation is similar, that they were not aware of it either. This overlay is being put into play without adequate community input. No one feels that the overlay seems to represent the view of a minority group of residents and at the expense of the majority of the residents, especially those who are long-time owner-occupant and have not expressed their views. We ask that the matter be tabled until both the north and south side of Washington Avenue communities have had an opportunity to study this matter and present their views on it and reach a consensus. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Green? Yes, hi. You know, what is amazing to me is that how uh, there's no real community meetings or input regarding these bills, and they're just passed through city council uh, regarding these. Um, my concern is this. Uh, there was a storage business, a very nice one, it wanted to come at 23rd and Washington Avenue. He met with us, and he and we approved his project, it was very nice. And his buildings look similar like casino buildings. And uh, he was gonna make it very nice. But at the meeting, uh, Mr. Feinbush decided he did not like, he did not want the storage building. So at that point, he goes down to another group, uh, RCO, and get them to support his position. And so, once again, when I spoke with the lawyer personally, he let me know that he had received challenges and threats of an appeal if he moved forward with the project. This is my concern right here. They had that option to appeal if they do not like uh, this particular type of project, you know. And I do understand this bill does allow for appeal process. But I think that at this particular point, that these businesses have, we should be, it should be open to just businesses coming through at this particular point, industrial businesses that provide jobs. We're not talking about Starbucks. We're not talking, I'm saying, we're not talking about Starbucks. We're not talking about these little uh, retail businesses that don't really provide benefits for people or pay them part-time work. These are businesses, industrial businesses on, point, on, on Washington Avenue who do, supply uh, sustaining jobs. Um, I just also want to say regarding this issue, regarding the other, we got some clarification on that, if you don't mind me saying. We did get clarification on that, and the bottom line is what you're doing with this is that the IRMX does provide, do, does provide first floor in terms of industrial and or bringing in some type of, I'm trying to make sure I'm clear on that. But the, the, the developer would still be able to build on top of that up to uh, 70 feet. And so, 70 what? 72 feet. So what you're doing, you're giving us token, a tokenism here. You're saying, okay, you have a little bit of industrial on the first floor, but yet the developer is able to build higher up on top of that. We're saying under ICMX, ICMX says no residential. If the residents want re residential, they'll vote it in. But if they don't want it, and you make it IRMX, then we don't have the right to appeal the residential portion. And that's a concern for us. And so this goes around the city. We're saying that other areas have already been remapped, and the residents really didn't have input. To come at this late date and want to put this in is not really fair to the other residents who've already been rezoned and remapped. So once again, I do ask City Council to consider this. Um, I'm still willing to speak with you, but I think that that's, and it was explained to us you know, by an actual builder. We appreciate that. So you're only, we're only getting a little bit of first floor commercial, but the rest is residential. And I, I do not support Councilman's bill regarding the prohibiting of these businesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Over table. Thank you. Seeing, seeing none. Anyone else here to testify? Seeing none. That will complete our um, hearing of the committee on uh, rules. We will now go into a public meeting. I did, again, for the record, at 150145 is be held in the hearing to the call of the chair. Uh, chair recognizes Councilman Good. Can I make one, I'm sorry. one yes. point? I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to make one statement on Bill Number 150170, uh, the bill that I introduced to uh, legalize the sign. I'm not promoting and um, approving people um, putting up signs uh, before proper approval, but in this circumstance, uh, we believe that it was necessary to um, do an ordinance in order to legalize that. 
Um, we, this sign also would have to go in front of the zoning code for, if ever changed or removed, would have to go in front of the zoning board for a variance. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilman. All right, Chair recognizes Councilman Good. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the Bill 150124 be reported out of the committee with favorable recommendation. The rules of council be suspended so it's been first reading our next council session. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Hearing num Bill number 150124 is reported as committee favorably with a rule suspension. Councilman Good. I move that the amendment to 150168 be approved. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the amendment is adopted. Councilman? I move that Bill 150168 as amended be reported out of this committee with favorable recommendation. The rules of council be suspended so it's permit first reading our next council session. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Bill number 150168 as amended is reported out of this committee favorably with a rule suspension. Councilman Good. I move the amendment to 150056 be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the amendment is adopted. Councilman? I move that one, Bill 150056 as amended be reported out of this committee with favorable recommendation. The rules of council be suspended so it's made first reading our next council session. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, Bill number 150056 as amended is reported out of this committee favorably with a rule suspension. Councilman Good. I move the amendment to 150170 be, be approved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the amendment is adopted. Councilman Good. I move the Bill 150170 as amended be reported out as committee with favorable recommendation. The rules of council be suspended. So it's for first reading our next council session. Second. It's moved to second. It all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Bill number 150170. <laughs> We're getting tired. 150170 as amended is reported out as committee favorably with a rule suspension. Yeah. Councilman Good. I move the amendment to 150091 be approved. Second. It's been moved to second. It all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the amendment is unanimously adopted. Councilman Good. <laughs> I move the bill 150091 as amended be reported out of this committee with favorable recommendation. The rules of council be suspended. So let's permit first reading our next council session. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> bill. <laughs> Opposed? Hearing none, bill number 150091 as amended is reported out of this committee favorably with a rule suspension. That concludes the business of the Rules Committee today. Thank you for your participation. Yes. But I know now I'm way down.